Village founder Haraku Mashio awakens from a dream of dying from a terminal illness in his past life then goes about his normal day running his farming village populated by demi-humans. In the past the god of earth chose to reincarnate Haraku as an apology for his unusually harsh life and painful terminal illness. Haraku asked to reincarnate as a farmer as he loved watching farming shows in the hospital. God gives him a powerful new body and the magic omnipotent farming tool, which can summon any tool he requires and can be used without growing tired. Awakening in a forest far from civilization, Haraku selects the largest tree as the site for his farm and with the tool is able to construct a well, build a camp and dig his first field. To his amazement the tool causes crops to begin sprouting without planting seeds first. After a few weeks he rescues a pair of wolves he names Kuro and Yuki who gives birth same night to four puppies, adopting all the wolves to protect the farm from monsters and eventually Haraku begins harvesting his first crop. Elsewhere, a young traveling woman hears tales of the monster-filled death forest and decides to investigate. God realizes he messed up by reincarnating Haraku in the forest of death, but decides to wait until a monster eats him then reincarnate him again. Haraku discovers he can dictate which seeds the tool sows with his mind and expands his fields. With winter approaching, the wolves fetch a friendly giant spider who weaves warm clothing in exchange for living in Haraku's tree. Haraku names the spider Zabutin. Throughout the winter Haraku struggles with loneliness, especially when the wolf puppies mature and find mates, and even Zabutin reappears with 20 babies. In the spring, Haraku discovers a weakened vampire child named Ru in the woods, and after donating his blood, she resumes her adult size. Ru is amazed by his crops, which are new to this world, and explains she is a medicinal researcher, but when nobles sent a troublesome person to steal her research, she hid in the forest, they become friendly, and Haraku asks Ru to move in with him. Ru agrees, and they become engaged to be married. Haraku adds a herb garden to his fields to assist in Ru's research. Elsewhere, another young traveling woman is looking for the death forest. An angel named Tia appears searching for Ru, and is surprised to find her married to Haraku. Tia reveals Ru has a bounty on her after she destroyed a town, though Ru insists it was justified since a noble kept her imprisoned there. Ru abruptly invites Tia to live with them, and after experiencing their farming life, she takes to it like a natural. The wolves have even more puppies, so Haraku expands the farm to give them more space. Half of Zabutin's babies leave to find their own territory, but the others live on Haraku's fruit trees. Needing workers, Tia invites seven girls to the farm, members of an almost extinct high elf clan who need a permanent home to rebuild their population. Due to their long lifespans, the elves have multiple skills, including construction, blacksmithing and baking. Haraku worries the demon lord who controls the forest will accuse him of stealing the land, but Ru assures him the demon lord won't care. Haraku decides to improve the waterways around the farm. Zabudin captures a monster queen bee and gives it to Haraku who constructs a shed for her to build a hive and produce honey. Haraku and the elves construct a canal and reservoir for access to water and fishing. With an abundance of water, Haraku constructs his first rice field and uses the first harvest to make onajiri with fish. Next, they construct a bathhouse, including a second reservoir which they filled with slimes to purify water from the baths before returning it to the river. Haraku is able to have a bath, but his relaxing bath becomes very stressful surrounded by nine beautiful, naked ladies who insists on joining him in the bath. Five additional elven girls make their way to the farm, so Haraku decides to build more houses. The elves seem determined to begin having babies as soon as possible, worrying Haraku as he is the only man among an increasing number of women. Kiro the wolf narrates he is grateful to Haraku for giving him and his family a permanent home. He is certain Haraku, who easily survives in death forest and attracts so many potential wives, must be more than an average human. At everyone else's insistence Haraku's house is rebuilt even larger with single bedrooms for himself, Ru and Tia, and a communal dining room for everyone to share. Haraku wisely ignores the secret double bed hidden behind a locked door. Haraku harvests his first crop of spices, allowing him to make curry with naan bread. Ru and Tia become obsessed with turning cilantro into protective charms against Haraku's wolves who dislike the strong smell, as they still remember the wolves beating them up the first times they came to the farm. Winter approaches so everyone begins stockpiling supplies, particularly firewood and preserved food. Haraku fears he isn't contributing enough as he is the only one unable to use magic, but Lee assures him no one else has managed to live and thrive in Death Forest before. Winter arrives so with everyone confined indoors Haraku introduces board games, allowing Ru and Tia to maintain their rivalry without damaging anything. Haraku is surprised the wolves can also play, with Kuro easily defeating Ru at chess and Haraku at Mahjong. Spring eventually arrives but before they can plant new crops Zabutin sounds the alarm as a giant wyvern approaches the farm. Haraku's farming tool spontaneously transforms into a magical spear, W and he kills the wyvern. The slaying of a legendary wyvern terrifies the demon lord's generals and Drime the dragon king, who all wonder who exactly is living in death forest. 
Paraku grows grapes to make wine. God is punished by his daughter, the goddess of agriculture, who reveals the farming tool he gave Haraku is actually a replica of Grime the God's spear, and Haraku has only survived using it because God coincidentally granted him a supernaturally healthy body. Sabudin and the wolves catch another vampire who turns out to be Rue's sister Flora. As another researcher, Flora is fascinated by Haraku's description of fermenting microorganisms which make wine, miso and tofu, so she moves onto the farm, bringing cows and two dozen ogre maids with her. Feeling outnumbered, Tia invites three more angels and a tribe of lizardmen who provide chickens. Another thirty elves arrive, all with plans to have babies. Haraku really starts to worry about the absence of other men. As the farm expands to fit everyone Haraku renames it the Great Tree Village, and throws a feast to celebrate the occasion where everyone unanimously declares Haraku, as the village mayor. Demon General Bezel meets with Haraku who offers the Demon Lord 10% of his harvest as a yearly tax. Bezel accepts but later reveals to Generals Gratz and Randon he only accepted 10% for fear of what is protecting Haraku's village. Vampire Princess Ru. Angel of Annihilation Tia, an army of elves, angels and lizardmen, a pack of infernal wolves and a greater demon spider. Dragon King Drime also visits the village. Haraku realizes as mayor the need to cultivate diplomatic relationships, so they build an embassy to house overnight visitors. Haraku also wisely educates the villagers on the difference between guests and unwelcome intruders. Their next visitors are beastmen from Howling Village, miners and hunters whose leader Garf negotiates a trade agreement, silver, iron and glass in exchange for food crops. In exchange for wine Drime agrees to ferry trade goods between the Great Tree Village and Howling Village. Eventually, 20 beastmen ask to move into Great Tree Village, all young women. Haraku finally puts his foot down and demands the beastmen send men to live in the village as well, only to find the men they send are boys too young to marry anyone for at least 10 years. As Sina and the other beastmen acclimatize to village life, Haraku still worries about not being able to use magic. He later defeats a grappling bear and a bloody viper fighting outside the village, which he cooks for another village feast. With Flora's help Haraku creates mayonnaise and miso. Later, dwarves led by Donovan visit the village to trade Haraku's wine for distillation technology, allowing the village to brew corn whiskey. The dwarves end up moving into the village too. Haraku hopes the dwarves might want to marry, but they are only attracted to women with beards. Two dragons appear and Haraku almost kills one until Gucci frantically reveals they are Drime's daughter Lastis Moon and wife Grafaloon. Grafaloon asks Lasty to stay in the village as a diplomat, hoping to avoid Haraku becoming their enemy. Haraku later assigns Lastis Moon responsibility over all diplomatic relations, which the demon General Bezel finds out on a produce procurement mission. Terrified Haraku now commands dragons. He sends his own daughter Florum to live in the village as a spy. Florum is shocked to observe the village's army is powerful enough to threaten the demon army, and is even more shocked to learn from Lastis Moon their commander Haraku is a human strong enough he almost killed Grafaloon. Florum decides to stay in the village longer than planned despite being constantly nervous around Haraku. The village acquits a slime who drank a barrel of the village's precious wine. Autumn rolls in, and, over a hot pot, Haraku misses seafood, so Florum and Lasty arrange to trade for fish with a merchant named Michael. As part of the deal, he requests to become Haraku's purveyor, and manage all trade between Haraku and the outside world. Haraku senses Michael is trustworthy, though it is shown via comical flashbacks where Michael was terrified. Another dragon challenges Haraku to a fight. After capturing her Haraku discovers she is Hakuren, Drime's immature older sister. Drime explains Hakuren believed Lasty had married Haraku, and, being single herself, was jealous. Unamused, Haraku forces Hakuren to repair the damage. Hakuren discovers board games and Haraku is unwillingly drawn into strip mahjong that ends with the ladies seeing Haraku lose and get naked. Bezel learns of Hakuren's presence in the village, causing his co-worker General Randon to forward his resignation letter in fear. Demon Lord Galgardo is more concerned his daughter Yuri is going through teenage rebellion. Hakuren tries to move into the village as an unemployed layabout, but after Haraku punishes her enough times, she becomes the village schoolteacher. Haraku discovers some inferno puppies raided a dungeon home of Lamia ladies. After apologizing to them the Lamias begin trading dungeon treasure for crops. It eventually form a delivery service for all the trading villages. Meanwhile, Yuri is convinced Florum is Haraku's prisoner and plans to invade the Great Tree Village. Florum learns of Yuri's intentions, but Yuri has been lied to by ambitious, but known simpleton demon nobility, Rosalind, Clackace and Roju. Florum secretly arranges for Yuri's army to be defeated, but not killed, by the Lamia ladies. As punishment Florum moves Yuri, and the idiots into the village to work as an atonement, 
though she hides their attempted invasion from Haraku for political reasons. The trio try to escape but are always foiled by the Inferno Wolves and Demon Spiders. The idiots grudgingly help Florum with the village's financial paperwork, becoming known as the Town Hall Trio. Learning the truth about the village Yuri regrets almost invading and returns home satisfied. The trio decide to stay preferring village life to demon court politics. Delgardo is confused by Yuri's abrupt personality change and mistakenly thinks she has a boyfriend. Five mountain elves led by Ya move into the village, using their fire magic to craft pottery goods. Florum foils a sneaky plot by the trio to seduce Haraku. A dungeon is discovered where resides another bloody viper the elves want to hunt as its meat can increase their chances of pregnancy. As winter comes, Rue falls ill and becomes bedridden. Due to her symptoms, Sina suspects Rue is pregnant with Haraku's baby. As Rue's pregnant Pregnancy progresses Haraku goes about his daily schedule of running the village, farm work, checking up on everyone, ensuring village security and combat training. A man suddenly appears who turns out to be vampire progenitor Vargreif, Rue and Flora's 4,000-year-old grandfather. Vampires usually have children by transforming another human into a vampire, so Rue's pregnancy is a rare occurrence. Having seen Haraku's statue of the god who reincarnated him Vargreif reveals he also met god once before being born as a vampire. He has forgotten most details since, to keep his sanity over his eternal lifespan. He erases his memories every few centuries. Haraku carves Vargreif a copy of the statue which Vargreif secretly donates to the Temple of the God of Creation. The priests are so entranced by such an accurate likeness of God they let it be known the Great Tree Village is under their protection. To celebrate Rue's pregnancy Vargreif sends the village an expensive grand piano. The trio are too nervous to play it so Haraku ends up buying a cheaper version for them to practice on first, though regrets it when their practicing prevents him from a good night's sleep. Rue's pregnancy continues. In solidarity, the village gives up alcohol until Rue can drink again. Rue's labor and delivery period is an uneasy time for Haraku as he was banished from the house for the time being so he wanders the farm until Rue gives birth to their son Alfred, a half-vampire, and Haraku is overjoyed at being a first-time parent. Haraku decides the village needs its own currency as their current system of trading goods is no longer sustainable, so he forges great tree coins and gives three to every villager, though there is some confusion regarding exactly what one coin is worth. To celebrate Alfred's birth a grand feast is held and the dwarves produce a celebratory wine to be saved until Alfred is old enough to drink. Bezel finally declares the great tree village to be too powerful to ever defeat and plans to become allies instead. Galgardo throws a tantrum mistakenly thinking Bezel wants to arrange a political marriage between Yuri and Haraku. Haraku receives requests from almost 200 people wishing to move to the village to escape wars or persecution, leading to a decision to build an entire second village nearby to house them all. Great Tree Village 2 